then uh, welcome to this uh, third session of today, day two or day three, if you attended the, the workshop. So thank you for joining me for this session, uh, which is about Azure Data Factory and SSIS. I will try to compare what is not comparable, uh, <laughs> but I will do my best try. Then before we get started, a few thanks to the sponsors who make the event possible. Uh, organizing events myself, I know that without them there will be no event, without attendees there will be no event, and without speakers there will be no event as well, so thanks to everybody. That's amazing. Okay, uh, I am uh, Regis Bacabo, I'm a French guy who's been living in Denmark for 25 years, so that explains the partly Danish accent with the French accent when I speak English. <laughs> yeah, come in. And uh, I work in Switzerland, so that's uh, the third part. Actually, no, now I'm unemployed, so if you have a job for me, I'm <laughs> uh, With a Swiss salary? Yeah, yes, please. I'm working from home. Uh, so no, uh, first time since 1995 that I'm unemployed, I'm really enjoying it. My mother is very worried, but I'm enjoying it. So I'm a consultant, uh, developer. I started many years ago uh, uh, in the late 90s uh, doing uh, website development and I moved to uh, .NET development and uh, to uh, database and, uh, and later uh, BI development. I like uh, speaking at events like this one. I've been uh, writing a book with a colleague about SSIS, even though it's not the right format. It's a bit... <laughs> but it's still a book. Uh, when I don't work, like now, uh, I like uh, living on the, on the farm in the countryside in, in Denmark, where I take care of my uh, sheep and, uh, and chickens and geese, and sometimes of my kids also. I organized a conference called SQL Nexus in Copenhagen. It took place uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and uh, that's about it. All right. So in the ring today, we have two contestants. Uh, on the left side, we have the Azure lightweight uh, cloud-based uh, service called Azure Data Factory. And on the right uh, side, we have this old guy uh, called SSIS, who first appeared in 2005. It was eight years in the making. Uh, so these are the two uh, people fighting today. And this, don't believe the winner, we will find out later who wins the, the fight. I think it's a Swedish woman. <laughs> it says police. It's All right, so we will try to uh, compare what's uh, happening uh, with Azure Data Factory and SSIS throughout the session. If you have any questions, just uh, interrupt me. Um, so, looking at the core concept of Azure Data Factory or ATF. Uh, how it works, how you build the pipeline, and then doing the same for SSIS uh, very shortly because I'm sure that you know more about SSIS than you know about uh, ADF. And then uh, trying to compare every single element of the two platforms and see where they match and where they don't match. So first of all, Data Factory is, is a, is a cloud-based data integration service which uh, orchestrates and automates the movement of uh, of data. Just like, think of it like a manufacturing factory where you take some uh, raw materials in one end and you have some products finished in, in the other end. That's the idea. So you can collect data from many different sources and transform them uh, on the way into, into insights. Uh, so that was the short definition. And right away, uh, actually, when, um, when Data Factory was created, it was an internal project for uh, being where they have to ingest, ingest uh, large quantities of data and, and prove and make some actionable insights out of it. And uh, someone with a really clever marketing brain at Microsoft uh, called it SSIS in the cloud, which it is not. Uh, but the name stayed and everybody said, oh yes, great, we have SSIS in the cloud now. We can do exactly what we can do with SSIS. We don't need uh, SQL Server licenses anymore. We can buy that on our credit card, um, it's not true. It's really not SSIS. You cannot really do ad hoc execution like you can execute a package. Uh, there is a terrible data type management. Uh, you cannot really use data sets which don't have some kind of time slices. 
uh, debugging sucks and there is uh, no way of doing continuous integration or there is a way but it's a really complicated way um, so you cannot just have a team developing your Azure data factory pipelines as they are called or activities and then uh, do some automated build and deploy that won't work so the way it works is that you have some sources on the left hand side different data sources and then you have data connectors to these uh, sources where you connect and you collect the data and you have some activities uh, which can be some transformation uh, or some computation in those pipelines and uh, on the other end you can uh, export uh, from uh, from these activities to different kind of destinations being a data blob or uh, <coughs> data lakes or maybe dashboards or even uh, even bi tools it's, it's quite simple it's not really etls but it's not elt either uh, but it's, it's a transformation transformation pipeline um, so digging into uh, adf what does it cost well it doesn't cost anything when you start it's first when you use it it begins to cost so there is no upfront cost, it doesn't cost anything to end using it but you pay as you go and uh, you pay actually for the movement all the data well, all the data that moves between elements you pay for that movement and you pay for the usage of the data and of course you pay for the data storage like you always do in, in Azure <coughs> that's simple, I will explain the prices a bit later, that's complicated at the heart of, uh, of a data factory, there is a, a data set. So a data set is just a logical description of the data. It uh, contains the structure of the data, what uh, the columns are, what the data types are, and then there is a mechanism uh, for accessing this data. What is the address, what is the protocol, what is the authentication scheme you want to use for access to data. Um, this is in uh, another element of data factory called the link service and in your in your data set you reference a link service if to get this data set I need to connect to this Azure SQL database or I need to connect to this SQL server on-prem via my data uh, management gateway so data set uh, has a description of the structure then you have name for your column column called bay is a string is it big enough? You want me to zoom in? No, it's okay. okay. And then you uh, you have a type of data set and then you have the link service. For getting this data, I need to find my link service called storage link service and it points to some Azure blob storage, I guess. Then uh, <coughs> what kind of data it is, a way to find it in your storage, if it's a, a tab delimited text uh, and um, you explain that you want to get this data set every hour. You cannot get data every second, uh, you cannot get data every milliseconds, but you can get data every hour, or so every 15 minutes, or every day, every week, every month. Okay, this now needs to be zoomed in. Okay. Which one is? I zoom in the other one, of course. Um, This is just my uh, SQL Server link service. It describes uh, on-premises SQL Server, um, and it says use this data gateway, which is running. My well, actually, I need to check if it's running uh, on that uh, laptop. And this is the connection string, a regular connection string to to my data to the data source. <coughs> then, when you're done describing the data sets and and how you access your data, <coughs> you have the concept of, of pipeline and the pipeline is a logical grouping of, of activities like data movement activities or data, data transformation activities um, if we look at it that way you can see that these are all the, the relationship between the en entities so you have a data set, a table or a file it is consumed 
by an activity, an activity can consume one or more data sets, and an activity can produce one or more data sets as an output. <clears throat> a logical grouping of activities is a pipeline. This is what you can monitor and manage and see uh, schedules for and see what's happening. And every, every activity runs on a link service being a Azure SQL database or being your on-prem um, SQL server or Oracle database or, or outputting to Azure data lake or whatever. There are two types of activities, all right? Already, you see, compared to SSIS, here you have only two types of activities. You have copy activity and transform activity. We do it like that. Okay, so all, the, all these are sources, and the orange one can also be destinations. So you can have all that as a data source. Uh, you cannot have document DB anymore. Now you can have Cosmos DB. It's even better. Uh, and every time there is a, a star next to it, it means that it requires a data management gateway to be installed either on the Azure VM, uh, where you have your setup of uh, data sources, or on your on-prem uh, settings. So if you want to. Uh, access uh, some DB2 data from Azure Data Factory, you will need a data management gateway which points at your, at your DB2 data. So if you would like to have a uh, sort of replication between one SQL Server on premise and other SQL Server on premise which are seeing each other, uh, then the data goes through the cloud or not? Or directly yeah, because Azure Data Factory is only a cloud-based technology. So you will go, this will be a long way to move data between two servers which are on-prem. Uh, you will need to push data through Azure Data Factory in the cloud and then, and then uh, export or transform it and output it into a, a server which is in, in the next rack in the same room. If but you have then the you same data center. Then you will have it available for the multiple data destinations. Yeah. yeah. But probably if you only do on-prem work, you're better off with the SSIS or other, other. Right. And this one can fit, but let's do it like that. For transformation uh, activity, you can have different type of, uh, of transformation. Uh, <coughs> some are based on HD Insight, and you have to power up a HD Insight cluster, but you can do map reduce, you can do hive queries, you can uh, um, stream, uh, do Hadoop streaming, then uh, you can use um, machine learning activities, you can, uh, <coughs> you can uh, use store procedures on your SEO SQL or your SEO SQL data warehouse or your SQL server on-prem. This is probably the most uh, powerful way of, uh, of uh, doing uh, transformation in, in uh, Azure Data Factory using your own store procedures on some, on some resources. Uh, you can also uh, add uh, .NET uh, assemblies or libraries to, uh, to do some computation. <coughs> and of course, you can uh, use a uh, UCGO from, from Data Lake uh, Analytics. Okay, let's try to go back to the presentation format. Okay, so as I said before, everything runs on the schedule and everything is uh, based on those data slices. In the data set, I specified that uh, this data set was to run every one hour. Then uh, it will be uh, <coughs> the scheduler which makes sure that the windows start in one hour from 8 to 9 and then the next window is from 9, 9 to 10. And if we are at 10.30, for example, then the current window will be uh, in, in this one. So the activities are scheduled to run every hour. Um, and again, you can see that the input for 8 or 9 or 10 is ready, and then the activity for 10 to 11 is the current one, which is running, or maybe waiting for some, some uh, resources to run. And then the output 8 and 9 are ready already, and then it's waiting for this to, to proceed before it can have the data slice of, of 10 to 11. So it's always 
some tumbling windows with this uh, with the, <coughs> the recurring uh, uh, frequency that you have defined on the data set. Okay. This one I discussed already. Okay. So when you want to get started with a data factory, there are several ways of doing it. The simplest one to get started at least is to go to a portal azure.com and then start building your, your data factory uh, uh, pipeline. When you start there, I will show you that in, in a few minutes, um, you have to define your link service, so either the data source, data stores, a source or a destination, and you have to define your compute resource for the data transformation. In your in your data stores, you need to uh, to um, to add your credentials. If you have some uh, some data store which reference on-prem resources, then you ha you must use the data gateway. There is no way uh, without the data gateway. Every no, 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 actually you can have a, a centralized <coughs> data gateway uh -huh. which points at different servers. And then um, you can also have a, a scale-out architecture for data gateways. You can uh, uh, have one taking over when one is failing. Uh, there is some mechanism to exchange uh, credentials and keys and things like that. But then all the data are better than this one point and it was... Yes. Okay. It's not the same gateway as uh, for Power BI? No, it's, uh, it's not. So you've got to have like two or more. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but you can decide that depending on how much resources or how much uh, run you have on your system, you can have one data gateway serving all your 50 data yeah. sources which are on-prem or you can see that it's, it's too much work for the data gateway and you want to split that into several data gateways. Uh, but so uh, you can only have one data gateway on one server. If, I, if it's still true, so I think. best practice probably would be that uh, we have one server just for the data gateway. Yeah? Depending on how much data you want, to, you want to push in. But then it requires some work from the from the firewall uh, guys to open all the yeah. the ports or all the IP addresses that don't have a rule name based uh, firewall. And, 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 and a lot of complications. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have on-prem resources, you don't have any other solution than, than data management paper. Even if you have uh, <coughs> some kind of trust between Azure and your on-premise? Yeah. 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 You can build your own uh, .NET application to take some data from your, uh, from your SQL server and uh, FTP to some mm -hmm. Azure uh, blob uh, storage. Then you don't need the data management table. But if you want to stay within what what is given, you have, you need the data mm -hmm. Then you have those data sets that I mentioned previously. There are some just a description of the data structure in the data stores. Okay, let's show you that. So actually, I had a a case with a, a customer which is a very small uh, shipping insurance company in uh, Scandinavia and uh, they receive uh, inspections data from uh, Lloyd, uh, the big uh, shipping uh, insurance company and every on every ship on earth there is some inspection going looking at the engine, looking at whatever they need to look at and they make some reports, they make some defects and from that uh, the insurance company can say okay you have to pay 10 million dollars in insurance for that year because you have all those defects uh, and every ship in the world have a, a, a ID, a identification number, so it's easier, it's easy to find a ship. So they get all this data in different uh, formats every day or every month, mainly in CSV files and these guys, they're a really small company but they have quite a lot of business going uh, around all the world and they don't care about infrastructure, they don't want any IT infrastructure, they do insurance, they don't do IT. So uh, we had to build this, uh, this Azure Data Factory thingy for them. And this is how the adventure started. So, so the source was uh, the flat file, right? Yeah. 
it was CSV files. Um, so if we go to Azure, so this is the the front of Azure. I built one already here. So data factory. And you see, uh, you see this window. So the first thing here is where you can, you can, you can build stuff, <coughs> author and deploy. And then there is a, a nice one to get started to copy data, like a copy data wizard that can help you through the first uh, pipelines, and it will generate everything for you without really uh, bad naming conventions. But any uh, anyway, you get what you need, and then you can build uh, on top of that. You can monitor your uh, your pipeline, and then there are some sample pipelines which are some really simple and some really complicated, and then you can see everything about about operations. So if you want to start with the pipeline, this is how you build your pipeline. So if you want to have some data from your data source, you can have those different data sources here. So let's see, I want some for my SQL server. Then I got some in information here. It's JSON based, everything. So here I can add the connection string to my to my uh, SQL server. And because it's an on-prem resource, I need the name of a gateway. And to get the name of a gateway, maybe the good idea is to start with creating a gateway. You can create a gateway here. And then when you choose new data gateway, you can just uh, create one, and it will uh, it will suppose that the, the computer where you're working on already has a data management gateway installed. The other option is that it will you can download the data management gateway, set it up on whatever server uh, you're working on, and then you can you can edit it from it. Uh, but now I already have one. So this is my data gateway, which I have running somewhere. I hate this. Oh, it's because for some reason it's in Danish. Microsoft Data Studio's gateway. Yes. And it is called ADF. Uh, Gateway, and you can see this is the same same name that I have here. ADS Gateway. Uh, this is the the URI. So it's when you uh, basically when you install it, it's online. It has been up since uh, the tenth of May. It's uh, just uh, pinged in uh, in uh, universal time. So seventeenth is it today? Uh, and everything which is to know about it. Um, is written there. Actually, once it's set up, you don't need to worry about it. The only thing that you need to worry about is just uh, writing the name uh, correctly here. So you say you will want to use your ADF gateway. And then you're good to go. So this is a draft. Once you're done with it, you can uh, deploy it. And it will complain because there is something missing, or the name is not correct, or it's uh, repeated. So there is some validation happening here. It's not the best development tool in the world. It's still a browser. If you have something that you, it checks if uh, if elements are referenced in other elements. But even if you delete elements that are still referenced and you want to uh, create a new one with the same name than the old one, it will say, oh, "No, you don't have the. It, it's already existing." And deleting elements takes always a few seconds of uh, of latency. So. You have to wait. Is it deleted now? Is it deleted now? Uh, no, nope, not yet. And then you can wait and wait. So, so it's there not. Is, there is no extension that goes on Visual Studio. Yes, there is. There is. Yes. The other thing, if you are new to uh, Azure Data Factory, is to use the Copy Data Preview. So here yeah, it's like a wizard in uh, in five steps that can uh, help you get through. So this is, for example, my Copy Pipeline C44. This is the perfect name. Uh, I want to run it every 15 minutes, which is the fastest I can. I can I cannot run it every 10 minutes, so let's take it on a daily schedule every 
every day, start, let's start very soon. And then I say, okay, I want to connect to my single server, which is somewhere. Where is Seagull server? Here it is. I want to connect to my Seagull server. This is my connection name, the data gateway. He already knows because I have one. And then the server. Uh, remember, it's JSON, so you need to escape. Uh, maybe not here, but in the JSON, you need to escape uh, backslashes with backslashes. Uh, and I think this is the name of my database. Credential encryption, I like it like that. SA, that's the best user we have on that database. Now it's trying to connect to my database. Okay. <coughs> uh, and then I can just use a query. This is a query from and where because still, since it's uh, windowed, um, One. Yes. And custom query. Uh, okay, sorry. Then we can edit that. I don't want all that. So select uh, not all the stars, but only the first ten stars. Top ten from blah blah blah. I don't have a where close, for example. Simple query, validated, I can see my data. Okay, now destination, I want it to be in a cloud storage. So from my subscription, yes, I take this subscription. Uh, I got a ADF storage that I created. And then I have some folder that is also created. And I can also so in the in the input folder you can have some dynamically created uh, subfolders to uh, generate the year the months the day the hours the minutes so there is some syntax to do it uh, actually i take it like that it's even simpler when you copy paste so this way it will uh, use the folder called uh, lavaretus and then it will create a folder for the year a folder for the month and a folder for the day and it's Hans Christian Riff's birthday in tomorrow. Which actually is the customer. Okay, like that. Compression type. So we can compress that. Text format. It's a type delimited. And then there is a summary of what I've been building. And I can deploy it. Storage is the cheapest, right? Yes, it is. Especially when you zip your, <laughs> <laughs> your data. Okay, now it's creating the pipeline. Okay, so now I got the pipeline. So if I go back here, okay, I can see my pipeline. And this is the pipeline I just created. So I can right click on it and see, say that I want to delete it, but it will say, no, you can't delete it. Or maybe it will delete it, because there are so many other activities attached to the pipeline. Uh, this is working, so now I have to clean up. I need to delete this one, this one, and then I need to delete that one for being for cleaning. So uh, you see the development process could be a, a, bit, uh, a bit smarter. Still deleting. Okay, it's good. They call C44 for some reason. And at least I can find that. But, but if I try to delete the link service before I delete the dataset, then it will complain that this uh, link service is used by a dataset. So the other uh, way of, uh, of uh, developing for Azure Data Factory uh, is to use. 
um, Visual Studio. In Visual Studio, there is an Azure Data Factory uh, project uh, type, so uh, you will get uh, uh, these artifacts. When you create a new uh, ADF project, you get the same look and feel than on the Azure portal. You have your link service, your pipelines, and your data set. In that case, um, they are called uh, tables, but it's the same. And then you can have different, uh, different uh, deployment uh, concepts. So this is for my production deployment. I can have one for dev and one for demo or whatever. And when I push it to Azure, I can decide which one, uh, which of the config I want to use. So it's a bit more uh, developer. -like. So here again, I got the same thing. I got my SQL server link service referencing my uh, data factory gateway i got my i got my uh, pipeline this one this time is uh, is um, there is a graphical representation of my pipeline you can see that there is an input which is my table and then there is some copy happening and then it's outputting it to a block and if we look at it we can see the that's a lot of windows, but we can see that this is a copy activity. It takes uh, the source is the SQL source, and this is my query, and the destination is a blob, and this is the data set for the input, and this is the data set for the output, and this is a daily activity. It has a name. I can say this should start uh, on in, uh, in the third of June because it's not ready yet, and I can uh, I can just dis decide to deploy it and not uh, enable it. Even if I say it should start in uh, in June, I can have this parameter called is post, and it will just uh, if it's true, then it will nothing will happen until I, I change it to false, regardless of the start and end time. Then when I'm happy with that, this I can put in source control. Um, so I can keep it somewhere a bit more safe. I'm not saying that Azure is not safe, but <laughs> I can keep somewhere where I, I know it is, and then I can just publish it to Azure. Of course, it requires that you are signed with your with your portal account. And you can use an existing data factory, or you can you can yeah this one, or I can create a new one. And then you, you choose, you can decide which uh, deployment configuration you need. And then you can decide which items to publish. Maybe you don't want to publish anything, everything. Maybe just uh, publish your pipeline. Uh, and then it reads from the data factory in Azure. And it will replace it with what you are pushing if there is something. So it will remove this one, for example, if I want to, it to replace it. So let's take everything and let's don't break. Let's break something else like that. Okay, there are some more. Yes, let's remove those and replace them. Then it tells me what it's going to do. Remove items and then I can push it. And the uh, magic is happening. So using a uh, PowerShell in the background to do all this work. Yes. So if you would like to limit somehow the data set, to the only way is to do some workloads or something like that. Yeah. So now it's not working. Azure Storage link service is in failed state. Fail to connect to link service. Probably this uh, Azure Data Factory is not in a working, but we don't need to uh, deploy anyway. So this is how you do it from from Visual Studio. So there is a a, a, a bit of developer experience, not much, but a bit. All right. Of course, when once it's uh, running, then you can always go and and watch uh, what is happening. That's the monitoring part. Uh, this has been uh, improved since the version uh, 0.1 of Azure Data Factory. Now they are in version 1. But you can see the pipeline. <coughs> Sorry. So this is the source. 
the um, this is the transform and this is the output. And on every uh, every single element, you can see what's going on. And probably this one is not. I can see the text. This one uh, is daily, and the pipeline is is both true. So I, it's on it's on a break. So it's not working. So if I go back to my pipeline and edit it and say, okay, let's remove the post thing and then I deploy it. Let's close this one and I refresh this probably with function like that. Now it will uh, start doing something because I started it on the 15th, so it's two days ago, and it's a daily copy, so it will take data from the 15th, make that window for the 15th, copy the data for the 15th, when it's done, it will take the one for the 16th, and then it will take the one for the 17th, which is today, right? Yeah. So. so we can see it's running 15 and 16. <coughs> What kind of information do you have when something goes wrong? I don't. I don't know. It never goes wrong. <laughs> 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 no, you have uh, some uh, detailed uh, information, uh, like connection error yeah. or, or syntax error or, or code before you can deploy. But there can be some some data type uh, mismatch, uh, things like that. They will they will appear when you look at the um, at the activity details. Um, can we spot some changes in the source database? No, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't do uh, drift detection. Only at uh, runtime. Okay, so let's go back to the the slides. We have a few comparison. Okay, so in the Azure portal, this is what we saw. How it looks like in Visual Studio. We saw that too. Then you can uh, do it with PowerShell. There is uh, there are some some PowerShell uh, commandlets or CMDlets for for doing uh, the Azure Data Factory work. And there is also a REST uh, API. Uh, you can use a curl with the REST API um, and uh, and uh, do it that way. So I guess. I prefer the Visual Studio way, also the, the PowerShell uh, way is, uh, is a, a controlled uh, way of doing it. Maybe it's more difficult to add some, some dynamic uh, to that, but these are the tools that, that you have. So that was a, a short overview of, uh, of, uh, of Azure Data Factory. So SSIS, I guess you guys know about SSIS. It's for doing uh, ETL, Extract, Transformation and Load. It was born in 2005. It's almost enterprise ready. Some will pretend it is enterprise ready. Uh, there's still some room for improvement, but it's working. Uh, it's part of the SQL Server license and installation. So if you have a SQL Server license, you can use SSIS. Uh, if you uh, don't have a SQL Server license, you cannot use it. Yeah. Uh, it's really baked into a SQL Server. You can use it in several ways. You can develop packages with Visual Studio, but you can also use the, uh, the copy uh, wizard uh, from uh, Management Studio. It will generate uh, SSIS packages. Uh, there is a whole ecosystem of uh, uh, professionals uh, <laughs> delivering SSIS uh, packages, uh, companies providing extra packages for what uh, doesn't exist. It's a really rich uh, development tool. Some crazy <coughs> guys are also writing books about it. Uh, there are some uh, built-in transformations, and what uh, is not uh, built-in, you can script you out of in, in most cases. The uh, development environment is also really bad. I mean, if you like dialog windows, then you will like SSIS development environment, for sure, especially when you're writing scripts. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's about SSIS. So now let's go into the detail of comparing the two. I have different levels of uh, comparison. I have also added the pricing. Uh, it will show in a few seconds, but let's look at the development first. So for developing, 
for developing uh, SSIS. You can use SQL Server Data Tools, which in, uh, in some cases is free. Of course, you can use it within Visual Studio, which is not free uh, unless you have the, uh, the, what's called the community license, but the other ones are not free. But if you have only SSDT, then it's for free. If you want uh, to but develop... There is no, there is no SSIS for 2017, yeah? No. Okay. True. But there is no SSIS 2017. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, for Azure Data Factory, you can use PowerShell, you can use Visual Studio, uh, you can use uh, JSON scripts written in Notepad, or you can, um, yeah. So basically, there is a standalone tool for both ADF and SSIS. There is a powerful uh, GUI for SSIS, not for ADF, in my opinion. Uh, both uh, can be done with uh, free tools. It requires a SQL Server license if you want to use SSIS, and it requires an Azure subscription if you want to use uh, Azure Data Factory. Okay. The administration of SSIS is done via Management Studio, and you can also do it via, via PowerShell. The uh, administration of uh, ADF is done via the Azure portal, and you can also have uh, PowerShell with the uh, ADF uh, command list where you can, where you can do your, your admin work. The next one, so it says deployment before, now it says pricing. So this is, I haven't checked the prices yesterday, but uh, mm -hmm. the last time I checked that was the price. How so, how it looks with the company you, you work the, the that case? Yeah. Uh, could you give some more details? How, how big was the data and uh, how much it will cost? Uh... Yeah, so the data is, um, so there is no new data coming every week in some cases, some other cases every month. And the first, I think it's like maybe 150,000 new rows every month for some data sets and uh, 10, 15,000 every week for some other data sets. So it's not huge growth yeah. and it's some quite wide uh, tables so many columns uh, mainly with the since, since it's come from a csv file uh, it's uh, only uh, text and and uh, if you want to build some some relations so uh, it's uh, um, it's it's a bit more work but but uh, it's i think it's it's more expensive than having everything on prem in a way because you have to pay for everything but you know you can predict the cost if you have your server in your data center then you don't know if you need a, a windows admin and then if you need 24 7 uh, maintenance then you need uh, seven people to assure that you need to buy hardware you need a lot of other stuff um, so this is a uh, predictability is, is better from a cost point of view. in uh, when you use uh, adf if you have some uh, some uh, activity running uh, with high frequency. So uh, from, uh, I think it's from hourly until, uh, yeah, from minutes to uh, two hours, you pay 50 cents per activity per month. Low frequency are more expensive because they don't run so often. I don't get that. But anyway, uh, you pay 80 cents. Uh, if you have on-prem, uh, data, then you need to use the data management gateway and then you will pay for those activities uh, in that way. And it's just with your local uh, drug dealer, the first uh, five uh, activities are free and then, uh, <laughs> then you have to pay for it. And if you have more than 100 activities, which is quite a large pipeline, then you get a 20% discount. That was for the uh, activities uh, themselves. Then there is the data movement. If you have moving, if you move uh, things between cloud data stores, so from one block to another, or from one block to Azure Data Lake, or whatever is in the cloud, you have to pay 20 cents per hour of data movement. Uh, if you have some on-prem movement also, then you can add 8 cents to that. If you have pipelines which don't do anything, then you also have to pay 67 cents per month just for them being there. Can you switch off the pipeline? You can delete them. 
You can deactivate them, but they are still there. Yeah. They are just inactive. It's that wise for each pipeline. Yes? Inactive pipeline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to rerun for because of for some reasons, if it's failing, uh, if uh, you have some some tries, if you're developing or doing stuff like that. Then for every thousand reruns, you have to pay one euro, 13. And if you have uh, on-prem is involved, you have to pay 283 for a thousand rerun. And again, yeah, inactive pipelines are also a bit expensive. So SSIS, you can get it for free. In the Express edition of SQL Server, you got the import and export wizard, and it will generate SSIS packages. That's the all free SSIS. Then uh, in the standard, and actually it didn't change with the service back when, when they introduced all these, uh, these uh, licensing changes. Uh, if you have standard and BI editions, enterprise uh, editions is a bit different. But in the standard edition of SQL Server, you have standard SSIS. If you want something more, uh, some advanced adapter, if you want to do change data capture and things like that, then you need the enterprise edition of SQL Server. So to uh, sum it up, licensing in SSIS is true. You pay for features in SSIS, <coughs> but in ADF you only pay for the usage. OK. Um, also, some, something else about, about pricing. Uh, it's in the Azure environment, ADF, yes it is. Uh, there is no hardware setup for ADF, there is no software setup for ADF, there is no data <coughs> center related cost for ADF, unless of course you use on prem data. Is that true? Really? Yeah, you because just. if you are importing to some kind of storage or database in the cloud, you have to prepare sort of hardware, yeah. infrastructure as a service, or at least. Or, uh, but you don't have the. Uh, you don't know, you have prepared the, the software, then, yeah, not the hardware at least, but yeah, if yeah, you use uh, Azure or VM, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then I compare it uh, as having your own okay. data center in a way. If you use pure cloud uh, uh, services, then you have only to pay for your, your, the usage. For SSIS, on-prem, you have to uh, install, have a license of Windows Server or whatever version you want to run, you need some hardware, you need some cooling, you need uh, some uh, coffee, and you need uh, extra disk and uh, power adapter and whatever can, uh, can go wrong. So it's another cost, it's less predictable. Maybe uh, in the long end it's, uh, it's cheaper, but sometimes you want to pay for predictability. Okay, so deployment of SSIS. You can do it in many ways. Deployment, you can uh, do project deployment, you do package deployment, you can use the SSIS catalog, you can also deploy to the file system, you can use MSDB. Uh, in uh, ADF, you can use PowerShell script to deploy, and there is some degree or grade of uh, automation that you can achieve uh, with, the, with the PowerShell script. Monitoring. SSIS uh, gives you some detailed uh, reports, even though they are crappy. Uh, you cannot even copy paste uh, data from the reports and put it in an email or in a, in a notepad. You have to take uh, screenshots <laughs> of the errors. But you have some alerts uh, and you have some possibility <coughs> for doing error handling. The only thing that you can do in, in, uh, in, uh, in ADF is uh, being a witness uh, to the error and then you can having a look at the log and then you can correct the error and wait for the next uh, time slice to happen and then uh, we run it. This is the kind of error you can see. So for data slice, there was some error and if I click on it, then it will give me a, a detailed explanation about, about the error. Regis, uh, but you can use REST API to read this information. Yeah. Gerhard built a Power BI workbook for visualization. Yeah. You Ooh. can download it from his uh, GitHub. Who did you say? Uh, Gerhard Brecker. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Almost there. Yeah. There are no event handlers in ADF like there are in uh, in SSIS, for example. Um, yet. And in SSIS, you have logging, you have the reports on the catalogs, and mention that. So for monitoring, again, in uh, in uh, in um, ADF, you have this diagram view, and uh, if it's green, it's good, and if it's uh, red, uh, then it's less good. Uh, you can see on the on the GUI what's Happening, then you can dig down into the into the uh, single execution and uh, look at the data lineage all the way it goes from the source to the destination and find out where where it goes where it goes wrong. Uh, it's it's quite reliable actually. Uh, it's uh, yeah, hard to debug, but at least it gives you a good idea of where things are wrong. And uh, and with the the, the Power BI you're mentioning, it's maybe a bit more uh, enterprise uh, like. So to sum it up, ADF, you've got monitoring GUI, you can do drill through, you can see by uh, data slice, you can follow the data lineage, uh, which are the two things that you cannot do in SSS, at least out of the box. Okay, looking at uh, data sources, <coughs> there are so many uh, data sources in SSIS, it's uh, really uh, hard to, uh, to to fit on the screen and, uh, and destinations also even more uh, so plenty of them in uh, in ADF we saw that before this is a more limited number so again uh, all our sources and destinations are the orange one uh, data management gateway required for uh, for some with the with the spam. For the transformation in uh, in uh, ADF, you have quite some uh, limited transformation. The most powerful being uh, probably uh, using a single server store procedure. Then you can do whatever you can do in a store procedure, or using a, a custom uh, .NET assembly. Then you can do even more uh, ravage with uh, with that. Uh, in uh, in uh, SSIS, there are quite a lot of uh, of uh, transformation that you're aware of. So to, uh, to sum it up, you can copy data uh, in ADF and SSIS, you can have C-sharp uh, custom transformations in ADF and SSIS, and in SSIS you can even have db.net custom transformation, how cool is that? Uh, you can uh, do a ping and hive transformation in ADF. You can also do it in SSIS if you uh, install the, uh, the Azure uh, resource kit for SSIS or whatever it's called, or if you call the, uh, Oliver and Tillman and ask them uh, for a free copy of their packages, um, where you can do that too. Uh, you can uh, run uh, Azure machine learning scoring out of the box in ADF. It will, uh, it will require quite a lot of scripting in, in SSIS to do that. You can stop studios after that. But in SSIS, there are a lot of built-in transformations that you don't have in, in, in ADF. Security. It's role-based on both sides. So SSIS, you've got uh, plenty of uh, different roles that you can grant or, or deny access to. And in ADF, you've got uh, those uh, different roles where you can uh, assign uh, users or groups to. Performance, actually it's quite interesting, performance. Um, I tried, so on the same uh, machine, uh, on the same network, I got this uh, same table on frame, and I moved uh, the data to, uh, to, uh, to a blob, like the pipeline we saw. I started, uh, I'm, I don't remember the number exactly, I think I started with uh, 100,000 rows. And so, okay, let's uh, move them uh, with SSIS from my SQL server where the data resides. I run the SSIS package on the same server and uh, pushed it without any transformation to the, to the blog on Azure. And it took uh, seven minutes for the first one, 
The second run, I did. Uh, I think I did two or three runs. The first run takes seven minutes. The second run takes six minutes. <coughs> uh, on ADF, doing the same thing. So this time in uh, Azure, uh, taking the data from my SQL Server on prem and pushing it, pushing it to Azure Blob. It took me seven minutes, uh, and then the second time it took me five minutes. And then. I said, okay, let's uh, push those numbers a bit. Uh, let's uh, instead of 100,000, uh, multiply that by 100. So I had 10 uh, million rows. And what do you think happened with 10 million rows? Do you think the time was multiplied by 10 also? Okay, we only have three minutes left, so I will keep uh, <laughs> making 10. So this is the time it took for 10 million rows. So from the seven minutes, it took nine minutes for the nine million rows, and uh, nine and a half minutes on a, on ADF for for the ten million rows. And looking at the details, at least uh, from ADF, you can see some more details. And I saw the first five minutes were preparation, <laughs> regardless if you have hundred thousand or, or one million or ten million. It was uh, around five minutes of preparation, and the active work was four minutes. So. Uh, Performance-wise, there was not a big difference, and I was on the same network for doing the test. Um, okay, so uh, conclusion. Obviously, SSIS and ADF are not built for the same purpose, so when to use which one is a good question. Uh, if you um, have some on-prem and you want to do some data transformation, maybe SSIS is a, is a good idea to use. Uh, if you only have cloud-based data movements, if your data is, on, is born on the cloud and resides on the cloud and it goes somewhere else on the cloud, then there is no reason to involve uh, SSIS in that, in that equation. Uh, if you need both, then you can do some, some hybrid uh, scenarios, either uh, running an Azure VM with a SQL Server and SSIS, and then you can take the best of SSIS and then the best of, of ADF. Uh, but I think the biggest, the biggest uh, learning point and lesson is that this marketing guy should never have called that uh, SSIS in the cloud, definitely not. That was, that was a, a big mistake. Uh, and still, ADF is a version one product, so maybe version two will be, or hopefully version two will be, will be better, and uh, and uh, and so on. So, if you have any, just a last comment. So, if you deal with uh, big data, maybe ADF is better suited if your source and destination is the cloud, also, uh, and uh, <coughs> in some way it can uh, cut down cut down the cost. All right, so any question now or later? I'll be around the rest of the day. Did you enjoy uh, movements to ADF from SSIS with this project? Uh, no. no, no, not at all. So the first time is a pain? Yeah. <laughs> so the time is the first. <laughs> as always. Yeah, first time is always good. <laughs> it's free. Just like the better time. Okay, if you have no question, then thank you and enjoy your lunch.